Hey guys, it's Brian Storm. Welcome to part four of my series on helping you guys become better at NHL 18. If you guys want to check out the other videos, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and check out the playlist in the description. In this video, we're going to be talking about face-offs, the basics, the counters, the tactics, and the set plays. This is probably one of my favorite hockey memes when the Maple Leafs were pretty bad. You might be feeling like this now, so we're going to make sure that after every face-off when you don't celebrate like a goal, but instead, you know it's all part of the job. So in NHL 18, new this year in practice mode is a thing called training camp. And they actually teach you how to do a lot of the basic face-offs. They allow you to practice them as well. So I'm just going to do a really quick 45 second rundown on how to do each face-off move. On the bottom right, you'll see my movement. And this is all for a righty. If you're using a lefty, then the controls would be mirrored. Where instead of holding the right stick on the right, you'd hold it on the left instead of holding the right stick on the left, you'd hold it on the right. So you have to know which way your centerman shoots the puck, either to the left or to the right. Some other basic things is with the left stick, you control which person you want to pass it to. So in this case, I chose the bottom right to pass it to my defenseman on the bottom right. With a tie-up, it's important to note that you need to grip your right stick in any direction, left or right, and then push up on the left stick to do it. Without the grip, your chances of tying someone up is lowered. And you want to do these motions the second you see the ref move his hand to drop the puck. There's an entire window for your input, so just because someone's like a second faster than you doesn't mean that they'll win the faceoff. All right, so now that we have all the different face-off maneuvers under our belts, this is a common counters picture that is shared throughout the internet. Now, what if I told you that this actually isn't entirely accurate. Personally, I've always wondered uh, what happens when a forehand guy meets a backhand guy or a tie-up guy meets a stick lift guy. Last year, the backhand would always beat the forehand and the tie-up would always beat the stick lift. The idea here is that if you were to do a forehand on someone who's trying to tie you up, you'll win 100% of the time. So I've decided that I want to experiment. I want to test this to see whether or not it's true. I did this by plugging in two controllers and I was using the same team on both sides. This gets rid of any kind of lag or any kind of uh, friend just not listening to you. I did every face-off move against the other face-off move. For instance, the forehand and the backhand, it's a toss-up between them. Again, it's not like last year. And these are all so done when both players have the same face-off rating. So now it's stick lift versus the forehand. And while this is happening in the background for the next like maybe five minutes, going through all these different battles, I'm going to be talking to you guys about face-off tactics just so that you're not completely bored of my lab experiment. And I'm going to start with doing face-offs against players that don't know what they're doing on the face-offs. So players probably in like Division 5 or lower. You should be able, at the end of this video, by the end of this video, to win every face-off against them because those players, they tend to only know how to do like one move off of the face-off. You should be able to know the counter to that move and then win every time. 90% of them will probably just go forehand, so all you gotta do is just stick lift them. Some people go tie up crazy, so all you gotta do is just go forehand on them. And you should be winning against them, no problem. But then, when you get to the more skilled opponents, it kind of becomes a chess match. Or just a more complicated game of rock, paper, scissors. You have to try to predict what your opponent's gonna do based on what you have done. We'll see later on, but a lot of people like to go for a tie-up in the offensive zone. That means to protect yourself against that, you always have to go forehand in the defensive zone. And then it gets even more complicated when you're playing against like a top player who knows that you're trying to defend yourself against that, so he's gonna go with a stick lift, and then you have to expect the stick lift and so you go with like a tie-off instead. It's absolutely crazy the mind games that you play against someone in the high level competition just on the face-offs. Oh, and here's where the, the picture, the counters picture gets kind of weird. The backhand ended up winning eight out of 10 times and the stick lift ended up winning twice but the counter should be 100% counter under even circumstances. And now I'm gonna show you the forehand stick lift versus the backhand, and it's even closer. It's a five to three ratio, meaning the backhand is favored against the stick lift, but I wouldn't really call it a counter. This also makes the stick lift the strongest face-off move in this game if there's no perfect counter against it. So yeah, back to the chess match. 
a lot of people, like myself, in the offensive zone like to pass it to the defenseman closer to the middle. If you know that the only way that I can get to the middle guy is with a forehand, then you should go for a stick lift. And basically, face-offs are just trying to figure out the pattern of your opponent and get into his head. Playing against upper-level competition, you'll find out that when your tie-up beats an opponent, your opponent's likely gonna try to go forehand next time. And this is a very popular rock, paper, scissors technique that is used by a lot of the pros. And to help me explain, I'm gonna use a video that I posted last year on my face-offs video, but I didn't put it in the video. So this time it's in the video and you're forced to watch it. Unless you just pause the video here and skip over it. How dare so Today you? we're gonna talk about rock, paper, scissors. So the first tip is that if you lose, that means the other person just won, right? So let's imagine that the, uh, the, your opponent won by playing rock. Now, the chances are that they're gonna play rock again, so you should then play paper. So you just lost on scissors, so you should play paper, which means that basically, even though paper beats rock, so the, the sort of cycle goes around like this, paper beats rock and so on, you should go the other way around the triangle. Let's imagine that you played scissors, the other person played rock, what you should do is you should go backwards around this triangle and play paper the next time because there's a high chance that they're gonna play rock again. Let's imagine then you just won, you played rock, right? And you just won on rock. Um, that means that they played scissors. Now they're gonna think that you're gonna play rock again, which means that they're gonna play paper, which means that you should play scissors. And so again, you basically end up going backwards around the triangle. So play what they just played and again, go backwards. Or an easier way to say it then is play what they just played. So in general then, if you're cycling through rock, paper, scissors, your best strategy is to go backwards and go scissors, paper, rock, and cycle through that way. It's pretty great stuff. If you guys want to check out more of Number Files channel, which is amazing, the link is in the description. Now back to NHL. The same idea applies in this little more uh, hectic rock, paper, scissors that we're playing on the face-offs. Last year was a little bit easier because the backhand and the stick lift ironically did the same thing. They both beat forehand and they both got beat by the tie-up. And then the backhand also beat the stick lift, making backhand the most powerful uh, tool last year. But look at what else we're about to see. This is the stick lift versus the tie-up and the tie-up's winning a little bit more, but the stick lift is still winning some of these matchups. And it's even worse when we're looking at the backhand stick lift, meaning people can't really counter the stick lift like I mentioned earlier in the video. And based on this logic, you should be primarily stick lifting off of the face-off. This next one is one that blew my mind, but it doesn't make a huge difference. Right now, it's the tie-up versus the deke off the face off. And I thought that the deke would only work if your opponent doesn't do anything. But this is proving that the deke for some reason has a 20% chance to win against the tie up. It doesn't necessarily mean that you should do it, but just know that it's possible. And then shooting off the face off never won, so don't, don't bother with that. And now we're gonna dispel a crazy myth in this game because last year we had a face-off synergy in Hockey Ultimate Team called Face-Off Master. It gave you points to poise and face-off rating. So I decided I was gonna grab a custom character, put the poise all the way up, and then another character have poise all the way down, and they'll have the same face-off rating. And it turns out it didn't make a difference. You were just winning as much with the low poise as you were with the high poise. I also did hand eye for some reason, but it didn't make a difference either. Now all the face off battles I was showing you guys with the penguins was Crosby versus Crosby. They both had the same face off rating, had the same endurance, which is a factor in face offs. I forgot to mention that if your player gets tired or injured, expect him to lose more face offs. But now with these custom characters, I made it so that one player has the default face off rating of 66 and the other one has a face off rating of 21 higher, which is 87. I chose this number so that I could test it with a face-off rating of one higher and 11 higher. And under this circumstance, the person with the lower rating was always doing the 100% counter, the stick lift against the higher ratings, uh, just basic forehand maneuver. What I found was that even though you're countering an opponent with a higher face-off rating, you'll only win about 60% of the time. And that's when their face-off rating is 21 or more than yours. I did the same thing, except this time it's with an 11 face-off rating higher. 
So 77 was the higher face-off rating. So when I did this experiment against Sticklift versus Forehand, the Forehand was still winning, but it was winning at a much lower rate, which to me meant that the players with like the highest face-off ratings, if they go up against a player who doesn't have a high face-off rating, they can just do whatever they want and they'll likely win. So for this one, if you're counting your opponent and he has an 11-ish higher face-off rating, you'll only win about 80% of the time and your opponent will win 20% of the time. It's not a perfect number, but the idea is that they'll still win. Then the last experiment that I wanted to do was what if the face-off rating was only one higher than the opponent? And for this experiment, I used the backhand and the forehand, which are toss-ups to each other. Because last year, I mentioned this to about 10,000 people. I said, if you have a higher face-off rating than the other person, you both do the same thing, then you will win. And nobody said anything about it. Nobody corrected me. So I tested it out here and it turns out that's not the case. It was about the same, because in this case, the person with a one higher face-off rating should be winning more, and he's not. So basically all this one says is the probability is about the same as if they had the same rating. This means that just because your opponent has a slightly better face-off centerman, doesn't mean that he's gonna win every face-off if you both do the same thing. I guess it just adds more kind of like randomness to the mix, which, uh, May not be a good thing. All right, I'll end my little experiments. Now let's talk about some more advanced tactics and then go into set plays. This first one is used by a lot of high level opponents. Look at what I just did. I start on the backhand and then right before the ref drops the puck, I switch to my forehand and then push down to win the face off. There are two reasons why you want to do this. You could fool your opponent into thinking you're taking a backhand and take a forehand instead or you can cause a tiny little movement that will make your opponent think the ref's about to drop the puck, which causes him to mess up, and then you end up just taking advantage of that. You can also, of course, start it on your forehand and then do it on your backhand. A little trick that people like to use if you're playing against someone who doesn't know how to switch up their uh, style is paying attention to whether your opponent is doing a forehand or a backhand grip. What is the opponent using the backhand grip when the back of his lower hand is facing you? and his top forearm is angled outwards. So I never took such a thing into consideration, and it might make me a better player on the face-offs, but this is just something that will elevate you as a player. You can do this against other players, or you can do this against the AI. Though personally, I found that when I'm facing against the AI, just doing a simple backhand uh, face-off win, I ended up winning like maybe 60% of the time. I don't know, maybe I was just getting lucky. Now going back to getting to your opponent's head, if you're looking at this from our opponent's point of view, our centerman can only pass this puck to the right. That means he has to be on his backhand and either do a basic backhand or a stick lift. Knowing this information, our opponent should be going for a tie-up because that's the best way to beat anyone on the backhand. You have to be on the lookout for everyone's position to try to get an idea of who he wants to pass it to. Another pretty amazing tip when you're playing threes is you don't have to pass it to Cyan right here. You can just pass it to the boards like my centerman does and just pick up the puck yourself, which actually throws what I just said out the window if you're playing against someone who will do something like this to you. But it's good against the inexperienced guys. Now we're gonna get to set play starting in threes. When you have a formation like this, or even if you just wanna pass it back to your defenseman that is a righty in this situation, the defenseman can just take a quick slap shot. In this case, I chose to the left because it's wide open, and it gives you a good shot to score. If the defenseman ends up taking the puck a little bit closer to the circle, towards the right, then it's probably better to shoot towards the right. Unfortunately, I didn't have a clip of that, but it is possible to score like that. What you can also do with that defenseman is wind up for a slap shot before you even get the puck, and you do this by holding down the left trigger or L2 and then spam up on the right stick. I don't see it go in very often, but just know that it exists. And I guess you can try it whenever you want. So now let's talk about set plays. The most common set plays in 1v1s are tie-ups in the offensive zone. When you have an offhand winger towards the middle, you can just take a slap shot like this, and it usually goes in. This time is going to ring off the iron, but you get the idea. You can also do the same play with your defenseman. Whether it's defense to defense or the winger that picked up the puck can pass it to his defenseman and shoot opposite side, which I don't have a clip of, I'm sorry. Though if the person that's picking up the puck is on their offhand, you can just take a quick lift 
little cheesy shot like this and that'll go in pretty often as well when you win it back to your defenseman even though he's not facing the right way like before i showed you how to score a slap shot when he's facing kind of towards the right you can do the same thing while facing towards the left just make sure you don't whiff on the puck actually best if you release the puck as fast as possible you shoot it because you don't want your opponent to try to poke you and cause a breakaway finally when you're on the power play i show this move a lot in my other series but you can just do a stick lift face off win to the left and then pass it across for a beautiful wide open one timer just one of my patented plays that you can do as well finally the last thing we're going to talk about is defending yourself from that crap now when you're about to take a face off in the defensive zone you can press b or circle and it will bring up your forward lines on the bottom you can change the way that your players are positioned on the face off and what you want to do is you always want to have it set to aggressive in the defensive zone. What this does is it causes three players to be on the left side closer to the net so that they can try to block shots as much as possible. And it definitely prevents a lot of the cheese. You still have to be vigilant for those one-timers though. Well, that'll do it for this face offs video. As always, if you guys have any kind of questions, I would love to help you out. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you want me to test anything else with regards to face offs and I'll see you in another video.